If you've ever wanted to take a real drum sample from a real song and then train your virtual drummer to play just like it, in this video, I'm gonna show you how, let's go. So what I've done here is imported a sample of a song. Now this is one of my songs, but I'm gonna show you how you can use any song that you can play a video or audio clip of and then bring it into GarageBand. I've then set up a virtual drummer track here in GarageBand and asked it to follow the original drum track from the original song. It's a simple but very cool way to get some custom drums in your tracks. The first step is to capture the audio that we want to use. Now you can use anything here because what we're going to do is actually use the screen recorder here on the iPad or your iPhone to do this. So I'm going to use SoundCloud, you could use YouTube, you can use anything that plays back audio and or video. So I'm going to play this song R-A-T-M to capture a little bit of a clip and then I can bring that into GarageBand and use that as the basis for my drums. To screen record we simply pull down from the top right corner, tap on the record button, it'll give us a one, two, three countdown, and then we can actually play our audio and capture it as a video file. That's about all I'm gonna use for this example. You can sample a whole lot more and use that, but we're just doing a little demo here of one loop. What we now need to do is jump into our photos and what you'll see is it's actually recorded that audio as a video file. Now here in our photos app, let's tap on this video file. Now we can play this right here in the photos app, but the challenge is it's gonna be video. We need to convert it to audio. Now there's a free way to do this. I've linked a video up there and in the description if you wanna learn that. I recommend using Audio Share. it makes it much much easier and it's only a few dollars. To send this out of the Photos app, we need to share it. Let's tap on the share sheet in the top left corner. And what I like to do here is save to files. If you've downloaded and installed Audio Share, you'll have Audio Share as one of your locations. If you don't see it here, simply tap these three dots, hit edit sidebar, and you'll actually have the option to turn on Audio Share as one of your sources. Once that's available, tap on Audio Share, and then hit the save button, and this will save it right into your default Audio Share folder. Let's now jump into Audio Share, and you'll notice that that screen recording is gonna be an MP4 file right at the top here. Now, if we tap on that, here's all the audio. We can just go ahead and play this but first of all we need to actually convert it to audio and this is why I recommended you download audio share because it's as simple as coming to the top right here tapping tools and then hitting convert and then we can convert this to audio I'd leave it as a wave file so check, make sure that that's on wave stereo 24-bit 44.1 kilohertz. That's going to make sure it's compatible with GarageBand. Let's hit save on that one. It's going to convert it. And now we've got this and you can see we've got the play button there. So we can now actually play this as an audio file. Pretty cool. Now we can just send this straight to GarageBand as is, but I like to do a little bit of cleaning up first here in Audio Share. So let's do some trimming. We're gonna come up to the tools and tap on that one, hit the trim and fade button here. And now we've got these handles that we can use. Now we want it to be from the point where it goes ooh. So we'll just tap there and hit the play button and find that spot. So there it is, there's our big oo right there. Now we can grab these handles and actually trim our audio. Let's drag this over right to the point there. Now if you hold it there and pause, it'll bring in this sort of view and you can come right up to the point where you need it to be and release. And there you've got your trim set. So we'll just tap the yellow button here and hit the play button. Let's see if we've got this to the right spot. That's it, and we want it to finish around about there. We just want those couple of bars. So let's do the same thing again. Let's grab this end handle and pull it back. Tap and drag it on back, and because we've got our little line there, we can line it up there, and uh, again, hold the hold the line there and get it right before that next waveform. Let go, and uh, let's sample this one and see if we've got this loop in about the right spot. We'll hit the yellow button and the green button. Let's take a listen. Sounds pretty good to me. We can now hit the save button in the top right corner and that's gonna save that loop down. Now at this point, just for a little bit of clarity, I'm gonna rename this file. So to do that here in Audio Share, I'm gonna tap and hold and then tap on rename 
and we're just going to call this R-A-T-M Loop, because that's the name of the song. And there you go. We are now ready and prepared to bring this into our GarageBand project. Back to GarageBand, a brand new fresh project. I normally just tap over here on the audio recorder just to bring up a default clean track here ready to use. What we now need to do is import this into our GarageBand transfer folder. So to do that, we tap on the loops icon here and we tap on files. Now we can import this by tapping the browse button here. And here's again why audio share is so handy because once again, we simply go to audio share there. Now, because we've changed the name of this one, we just have to scroll down until we get to our ATM loop. There it is. We tap on that one and check this out. It'll bring it straight here into our transfer folder. There it is. Now all we need to do is tap on that one, drag it into our project, and we're good to go. So tap it, drag it, drop it, and there you have it. So you'll see here that it's not going to be aligned yet because we haven't changed the tempo of this project. This default project is at 110. This is at a either faster or slower tempo. We need to work that out. So the easiest way to do this is to actually listen to it and then go to our tempo and adjust it by tapping it in. So let's hit the play button and listen to this sample as it is. Turn off your metronome there as well while you're doing this. So now what we can do is uh, come in here and try and find the right tempo for this. Now this is where GarageBand is a little trickier. If you use something like Logic Pro, you can do things like tempo detection. GarageBand doesn't have that. So you can use this exact same process in Logic Pro and it's even easier. Let's tap on tempo there. And this is like a dun da 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 It's sitting at around 92, I reckon. Uh, that's looked like a pretty good guess because look at that. It has lined that loop up now to be those two bars. It's almost spot on to the two bars. So that's a pretty good job there. Let's now put the metronome back on and play along with this track. Now, because this was not recorded to a metronome and the songs you bring in may not be recorded to a metronome either, it may take a little bit of fiddling. But the cool thing is it doesn't have to be exact because when we throw our virtual drummer on here, it will just use the closest kind of sound to use its follow feature. Let's show you how to do that right now. So let's hit the uh, track view button here to come back to our track view. What I want, now want to do is loop this out. Let's just make this an eight bar loop. So we just tap on it and hit the loop button and that's going to bring it out to the full eight bars. Let's just have a quick listen to see how this loops through. Pretty cool, actually. It's worked well. I might actually make myself a remix of my own song out of this. So we'll turn the metronome off there now. The final stage here is probably the coolest. This is where GarageBand does its little bit of magic, and that's adding a drummer track. So we're going to hit the plus button down below, scroll across until we get to the virtual drummer, and just tap on the drummer there. Here's our man, Kyle. And if we play this along at the moment, Kyle's going to be playing something that sounds nothing like our original drums. Let's take a listen. Kyle, we need to help you out. And we do that by using the follow feature here. So let's just delete out this first track here. We'll tap on that one and hit delete, just so we've got the two tracks here so we're not confused. We'll come back to Kyle. We'll tap on Kyle's button up the top here. Now we need to hit this follow button. And what we can now do is follow this audio track. So we're going to tap on the audio recorder button there and see what's immediately happened to Kyle here. He's now doing something very different. Let's see what Kyle is doing now that he's following our original Real Drum track. A lot closer to what we had there originally. So we're getting the same sort of groove, the same sort of vibe as we had in our original track. Let's listen to them together. Now, clearly, my original drummer, Francis, here from 20 years ago, is doing a bit more of a complex beat. So all we need to do is actually play around with our settings here. If we grab this, you can see now Kyle's going to do something a little bit more complicated. Let's hit play on this one.
The other thing we can do is change the hi-hat pattern here as well. The kick and the snare is going to be in line with that, but I know that Francis is playing more of a like a, a, a ticky-ticky kind of hi-hat, so I happen to know that hi-hat number four is probably going to work better for this. Let's grab that one and drag across to four and see we've got a bunch of stuff filled in here now. Let's take a listen to this drum track now. Bring in the original. So you can hear that the same sort of hits are happening there. Now, Kyle's probably not the right drummer for this. We might want to experiment with other drummers. And here's where it gets super fun because we can tap on Kyle's face here. And what about Logan? Logan's going to do something a little bit different with this drama track, but it's still going to be following that original track. So let's take a listen to Logan. Turn off the original. Change the hi-hat. Now, this is a bit more of a sort of heavy rock punk kind of track, so you know who we've got to turn to. Let's see what Anders can do. Oh, there you go. See, Anders is going to do a, a particularly complex version of this because we've got the complexity up. Let's just take a listen to what Anders has got to offer. Probably too many kick drums there, Anders, but don't worry. You can just drag this one on back and then try something like this. Works well, doesn't it? Bring in our original. So if you've got yourself any audio track and you can see where the possibilities lie here, if you're using someone else's track, just make sure that you've got their permission to do so. I need to say that before we continue on here. But yeah, you can use any audio, anything you can grab from uh, YouTube, from SoundCloud, from anywhere. You can import your own audio samples, your own loops, and then you can base a virtual drummer off that. And the flexibility here comes that if you wanted to then take that off in different directions, you can change the drummer around, you can turn it into a percussionist you've got a heap of different drum options here let's just do one more what about mason mason's going to do something interesting with this one he's going to do this so if i wanted to change the vibe of this song to more of a laid back retro cover version of this i can do that without losing that original feel and vibe the other cool thing is because it's now a virtual track as opposed to this audio track we can change whatever we want. We can change the speed. So say we wanted to make this a real sort of jazzy laid back groove. We can grab this and make it a bit slower. And uh, you can see there our original track's gonna go out of time, but this track, we've now got a different speed with that same original groove based on the original drummer of our original track. What do you think of this? Possibilities are endless, and I hope you enjoy this one. If you want to learn more about GarageBand and Drummer and everything else to create here in GarageBand iOS, check the links down in the description. Head to studiolivetoday.com slash GarageBand for even more, and I'll see you next time.